Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel, The Upper Hand. We recently had a comment left on one of our other videos from a subscriber asking for a video on manual muscle testing. Since we are already doing assessments, we felt like this would be an appropriate time to release that video. So today we're going to be covering specifically upper extremity manual muscle testing, and it's also going to be functional manual muscle testing, meaning we're going to be testing muscle groups versus individual muscles. And if you work in a setting such as outpatient therapy or some other setting where it's really busy, then you may be time limited. And functional manual muscle testing where you're testing muscle groups is a much more practical way to do manual muscle testing. But stay tuned because later we're going to be releasing some videos on how to test specific muscles. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's get started. Okay guys, so today we are going to be doing manual muscle testing for the upper extremity, specifically the shoulder, elbow, forearm, and wrist. And we're going to jump in real quick uh, with a review of the muscle grades. So take a look at this chart. And so as you can see, manual muscle grades range from 0 to 5, 0 being the weakest, 5 being the strongest. And some clinicians like to use the plus and minus system. I will say that this gives a little bit more subjectivity to manual muscle testing. So for the purposes of this video today, we're going to be grading on a whole number scale 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And so 0, according to this chart, is no contraction. That means that the clinician cannot appreciate any muscle contraction. And number 1 means trace movement. So you get a little bit of a contraction in the muscle, but it's not enough to produce any movement of the joint. 2 is the ability to move through any range of motion with gravity eliminated. And then 3 changes to against gravity with a 3 you're able to move through full range of motion against gravity. A grade of four means that you're able to move through full range of motion against gravity and then you're able to hold against moderate pressure. And then of course a five would mean normal strength or that you can move through full range against gravity and that you can hold against maximum pressure. Okay guys, so we're going to start with shoulder flexion. And so with any of these movements, you're going to instruct and explain what you want the patient to do, maybe even demonstrate it. So I'm going to tell Parker I want him to move his shoulder into flexion. I might not use that term, but I might say I want you to reach your arm up in front of you as high as you can and move it back down. And so when I am sure that he's understood the instructions, then I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and have him do that. So Parker, if you'll go ahead and move your arm in front of you, reach in front of you as high as you can, and then back all the way down. He demonstrated full range of motion actively against gravity, so we know that he's at least a three. So we can go ahead and eliminate possibility of it being zero, one or two. And so then what I have the patient do is move back up into about 50% of the full range, which is here at about 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. And then I'm going to apply my resistance here. One interesting thing to note is that when you apply pressure, you don't want to cross the joint. So if I'm testing shoulder flexion, I would come out here and apply the pressure at the wrist. I would come just proximal to the elbow and apply here. So I'm going to apply pressure. I'm going to tell him to hold and not let me push him down. So Parker, hold your shoulder there. Don't let me push you down. Hold, 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 hold. And I went all the way, gradually increased my uh, force I was applying until I got to maximum force and he was able to hold that. So I would grade him at a five. Alternatively, if he had have come up here and I had have started to apply the pressure and he was able to hold minimum pressure, moderate pressure, but gave with maximum pressure, that would have been a grade of four. Um, and if he was able to move the shoulder here, but when I started to apply the pressure, he broke under the pressure. I would keep that at a grade of three just because he was still able to move that through full range of motion against gravity. Okay, guys, so we're going to give you a quick rundown of shoulder abduction or abduction and scaption as well. The testing procedure is going to be essentially the same as shoulder flexion. It's just that the movement that the patient's going to perform is a little different because of the position they're going to be in. So with flexion, obviously the patient is going to move into directly in front of them. With scaption, they're going to be moved out to 45 degrees horizontally and uh, that scaption and then of course shoulder abduction is in a completely abducted position so with let's test shoulder abduction so they're going to start at zero they're going to start down by their side I'm going to instruct the patient go ahead and move uh, your arm up beside you as high as you can I may demonstrate it and of course have them be thumb up so that the humerus is externally rotated so they don't impinge but you're going to come up as full as they can so Parker go ahead and reach up beside you as high as you can See if they can reach that full range, he can. So I'm gonna have them come to 50% range, which would be about 90 degrees. 
And again, I'm going to apply pressure just proximal to the elbow so I'm not crossing joints. I'm going to tell him to hold and not let me push him down. So Parker, hold right there. Don't let me push your shoulder down. Hold, 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 hold. And he resisted against maximum pressure, so that would be a grade of five. With scaption, it'd be the same thing. If you wanted to test that, it's a functional movement of the shoulder. So he would be here in scaption at 50% range, and I would test at the same position. Okay, guys, so next we're going to test shoulder internal and external rotation. So I'm going to be testing Parker's right shoulder here. And so the position that you want them in is with arm by their side and then have them come in into 90 degrees of elbow flexion. And just like the other ones, I would demonstrate and ask the patient to move into internal and external rotation. So Parker, if you can, go ahead and bring your hand into your stomach, but don't let your elbow move. And then bring it back to the start position and see if you can move all the way out like that without letting your elbow come out and then back to the center. So he demonstrated within a normal range what we'd expect for shoulder internal and external rotation. So now we can test his muscle strength. Um, if he was not able to demonstrate full range, it may be a weakness issue where you could go into other types of muscle testing, but also it may be a joint restriction or soft tissue restriction. So with any of these tests, if they're not able to uh, achieve full range of motion before you assume it's weakness, go ahead and check and make sure they're passively maybe that there's not a joint or soft tissue restriction to uh, eliminate that and rule that out. So testing internal and external rotation, he's going to be in that mid position uh, between internal and external. Uh, this is actually an easy one because you can almost combine those without him having to move. So with him in this position, I would apply pressure uh, towards internal rotation, just proximal to the wrist, don't want to cross joints, and making sure that he's not compensating with shoulder by weighing this arm out. So making sure, maybe tell the patient, keep your arm at your side, but don't let me push you in. So Parker, I'm going to push your hand in toward your stomach. Don't let me push you in, but don't let your arm wing out. You ready? Mm -hmm. So hold, 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 hold. And I'm pushing with maximal force, and he's able to hold, grade that a five for external rotation. This can be a little bit tricky, because though I'm pushing into internal rotation, I'm testing his external rotator, so don't get those confused. Um, it's easy to do. So I'm going to do the same process for internal rotation. It's going to be in the same position, and I'm going to apply force just proximal to the wrist, maybe cupping my hand or around his forearm there. I'm going to be pushing into external rotation, but I'm testing his internal rotators. All right, so Parker, don't let me push your hand out. I'm going to try to push it to rotate out, but don't let me. So hold right there. Hold, 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 hold. And he gave a little... So with that, I would grade it a four because when I applied maximal force, he was unable to hold, so I'd grade that at a four. And one other thing you may be able to use clinically is to just go ahead and test both upper extremities for internal and external rotation. It doesn't take any more time. In fact, if you get the hang of it, it may become quicker, and it gives some valuable information for testing the strength of both upper extremities. So with that, all you'd have the patient do is to come into that position with both upper extremities and just tell them for, for external rotation, just say, don't let me push you in, apply the pressure, and then to test the internal rotators, say, don't let me pull you out, and you're just pushing in the external rotation, and that allows you to test both at the same time. Okay, guys, now we're going to do manual muscle testing on elbow flexion and extension. So Dylan's already done the hard part. He's mentioned everything and covered everything we need to, need to hear, so my part's pretty easy. We're just going to do basically a review, and a lot of this is going to be the same principles that he applied doing the shoulder uh, earlier in the video. All right, so go ahead and, and take your hand and just try to touch that shoulder for me. Very good. So you can see he's got normal elbow flexion. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and have Dylan get it to about 90 degrees of elbow flexion. Again, I'm going to apply pressure just proximal to the wrist because we don't want to cross that joint. However, we also don't want to be up here middle of the forearm because we want to get to the greatest lever that we can get or that we can achieve when doing manual muscle testing. So again, we're going to be just proximal to the wrist joint. So Dylan, don't let me push your elbow down or your hand down. So I'm pushing and good. So he, I would give that a five out of five. He was able to resist max pressure there. So for elbow extension, I typically just leave him in the same position. And again, I've already seen that he can go to zero or near zero. So I'm going to have him still at that, that 90 degree angle. And all I'm going to do is just apply upward pressure. Dylan, don't let me pull you up. Okay. Like again, he gave just a little bit that time. So I would probably give that a four out of five. And then we would move on to the forearm after that. Okay. So now we're going to do forearm pronation and supination. So again, I'm going to have Dylan do that motion for me. So go palm up to the ceiling as far as you can. Very good. Now go palm down towards the, towards the floor as far as you can. Okay. So again, we're going to have Dylan's thumb pointing towards the ceiling, which is putting the wrist in a neutral position. 
we're going to start with forearm supination. I'm going to grab Dylan kind of right in the middle of the forearm, but again, we want the, a good lever arm there, so I'm going to grab him almost closer to the wrist. Dylan, don't let me rotate your palm up, okay? Are you ready? All right, great. Again, he was able to do that against max resistance. That would be a five out of five. Same thing for pronation. I'm just going to come on the opposite side. Don't let me push you down. Very good. Another five out of five there. Okay, so the last two positions we're going to be testing are wrist flexion and extension. So for that, again, we're going to make sure the patient can move maximally against gravity without any pressure being applied. So I'm going to have Dylan kind of over the edge of a mat or an elevation pad. Dylan, go ahead and move your wrist up towards the ceiling. All right, and move it down towards the floor. So this motion is with gravity. If you wanted to get technical, you could have them supinate the forearm and then pull up against gravity. Usually you don't have to do that with this motion, though. If they can go full range, you can pretty much assume that they are going to be able to do that against gravity. Okay, so for manual muscle testing, wrist extension. To get them in the correct position, I will have him in a wrist neutral position. I like having them make a fist, and there, an important reason why we like doing that is because you've got three main muscles that extend the wrist, ECRL, ECRB, and ECU. If you allow the patient to extend their fingers and extend the wrist, that's recruiting EDC, which is not a true wrist extensor. So if you're testing this, make sure that your patient is making a fist, and I want to tell Dylan, do not let me push you down. Very good, five out of five. All right, so, and for wrist flexion, and we don't typically test that, it's just not one that we typically need. Your wrist flexors are pretty strong as it is, but for the purpose of this video, we will show you that. So I'm gonna hold here, I'm gonna be pushing Dylan up. He's not gonna be letting me. It did not break, he was able to resist max force. That would be a five out of five. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel, The Upper Hand, is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.